Hey guys, Chris here. Uh, back again with another video. I'm kind of on a hot streak here. I just feel like making videos. I know, I realize that I've only uploaded, like within the last year, I've only uploaded about six videos and um, I kind of want to change that. I know I keep using school as an excuse, but really, I mean, I have time. You know, like if, if I'm just sitting around at night, you know, or evening, like I'm not doing anything else, I might as well record one. So today I'm going to teach you how to make my my very, very, very t small, like, local. Like, when I say locally famous, I mean incredibly local, like amongst only a few people. Not, not the standard definition of locally famous, but my, my locally famous um, apple cinnamon wine. So this is apparently really the only thing I've ever done right. <laughs> no. Not the only thing I've ever done right. One of the few things that I've brewed that has actually come out very good according to a lot of people. And when I say a lot of people, I mean both my parents, one of my friends, my friend's dad, my friend's stepmom, my friend's... wait, I think that's it. I, it's like, it's like maybe six people, maybe seven people, my friend's sister maybe that liked this. So what you're going to do with this, I, I did it, I actually, as an experiment, I did it with two ways. I did it one with um, regular, just standard quality, standard generic apple juice and kind of, um, and then the other test I did it with like a higher quality kind of um, sort of like locally sourced apple cider again, locally sourced, like, you know, from Michigan or something, but like, regardless, like a higher quality product, they look similar, but pretty different in a lot of ways. So I don't know if you can see this, this is the regular quality one. It's darker. And this is the higher quality one, which is lighter, but much cloudier. And I think it will end up being cloudier because Right now, they're both very cloudy, but with this one, I can see a little bit into it, and with this, I cannot see, like, even a few centimeters into it. So, that one's gonna be cloudy. I know that for a fact. Um, but don't let, don't let um, major brewing companies fool you in that, in that cloudiness is not good, because there are a lot of uh, ingredients put in uh, alcohol to make it clearer and just because it's clear doesn't mean it's necessarily high quality and usually it's the other way around if something's a little cloudier it's better you know some of the some of the cloudiest beers I've had have been the best so but anyway I'll tell you what you do to make this so you want ideally to have a gallon container to ferment this in and in theory you can do it with the, the container that you buy the juice in. I don't really do that anymore. I'm gonna fix this the light. Just kind of the light is just kind of giving me an artificial halo. It's a little better. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah. So I don't do that anymore just because, um, just because I have gallon. Uh, gallon containers to ferment in, you know, and I'm not a huge, uh, microplastic fan, to be honest with you guys. That's a whole different video that I could, I could talk about hours about microplastics and all this crap they're putting in things, but that is a whole other video that I'm sure will be taken down because it will be correct. Um, so, but anyway, what you get is a container. If you can't get a container, whatever, just use the one that it came with. You get a Honeycrisp apple, chop it up finely. When I say finely, I mean you want little little chunks, maybe... I don't even know the difference between... I should know the difference between millimeters and centimeters, but I don't. So you want them about 10 millimeter... You want them like 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter, millimeter cubes. Doesn't have to be exact, of course, but you, you want them to be small cubes, right? Um, or for American, that's roughly half an inch cubes, you know? So 
but whatever i mean you could honestly probably do them in slices and it'd be fine but i just like doing this so more surface area of the apple more natural apple juice gets released into it that's why i cut them so small so once you do that you um you are going to have to dump out roughly half your juice into a cleaned out container you want to do cleaned out because it there's less risk of the brew becoming infected i've never had a brew get infected and i've only gotten lazier and lazier with cleaning stuff like i used to use star sand you know what you do with star sand is you you dump some out you dilute it it's kind of like it's a uh, acid-based cleaner but i've gotten lazy with that because i just don't care <laughs> i'll just run hot water over it maybe some soap and then run hot water again and that's it that's the cleaning process generally speaking you're gonna be fine i mean the only reason people use star sand is because they 100 percent want to know that something won't get infected i don't really care if something is infected if something is infected i'm gonna know it's infected it's gonna smell like crap it's gonna look like crap there's probably gonna be mold floating around it's pretty easy to tell so anyway what you so you you pour out half your juice into a cleaned of some kind of container right pour in the apples um and then get yourself half a pound no i'm sorry a pound of brown sugar dump that in there okay this is where having a well you're gonna have a sealing container regardless of whatever can, container you have but seal the container and shake it like there is literally no tomorrow shake it like you're doing the shake weight from 2010 shake it like you are um just shake it just shake it until you can hold it up to light and see that there's no crystal sugar in there anymore because you don't want that you want all the sugar to be absorbed into the juice so that it ferments evenly or not evenly but that just ferments all the sugar you put in there and if you're putting a pound of sugar in there you're gonna get it roughly actually maybe a little bit over i'm gonna take a wild guess and saying that with um, or you know what, you don't, or yeah, no, with an apple cut up in there, with all that sugar, with the natural sugar of the juice, you're probably going to get something roughly around the neighborhood of 15% alcohol by volume. Now, this is where it becomes a little tricky for the common folk. So once you've got that all shaken in, you're going to, um, Pour the rest of your juice back in there. Pop in a cinnamon stick. Cinnamon stick is what really, what really brings this all together. Because you can make apple wine all day long. You can make apple cider all day long. But at the end of the day, it's just apple. You want it to have something else to it. So I drop in a cinnamon stick. Um, and that usually gives it some good flavor at the end. So cinnamon stick dropped in. Oh, and here's another pro tip. Get yourself a lemon. I just needed one lemon because I was doing two batches. Generally speaking, almost for whatever you're making, or no, forget what I said. I think just with apple, and if you're making Kill You, I don't know if you guys remember my Kill You video. It's my most uh, viewed video, if you're curious. I put in half a lemon per gallon. So for the Kill You, I think I put in... I think I put in like five lemons because I made five gallons of it and it did not ferment but I think I was just being lazy because what I learned now is that fruit stuff like this will be shorter to ferment because there's more to grab onto but when you're making kill you or it's just water and sugar basically there's not a lot to grab onto that's why you need a ton of yeast nutrient for it um so it'll take slower. I So I was really stupid and I didn't wait for my kill you to be done. I just kind of threw it away because I didn't, I think I, I thought I did something wrong, but I didn't. I was just lazy and stupid. So anyway, once you got it all mixed together, once you got it all topped off, once you got your cinnamon stick in there, you're going to want to put yeast in. Now, if you are doing this recipe in an area where you cannot get brewer's yeast for whatever reason, or if you're 
just too lazy to get brewer's yeast, then you can completely forget about the sugar, the added sugar, and just um, put in like a packet of red yeast, right? But if you're cool, and if you can can somehow get brewing yeast, and you can, you can get it off eBay. You can get it shipped like anywhere off eBay. You can get a 10 pack of, you can get 10 five gram packets of yeast for like $10. Or if you got a brew shop around you, luckily for me, I have a brew shop 15 minutes away from my house. Um, I'm lucky, I'm very lucky to have that and they're very nice and it's the best brew shop I've ever been to and will probably ever be to in my life. But I, I always get my yeast from there, I always get brewing yeast. There's different types of brewing yeast. I think for, for all intents and purposes, when you're first starting out, get, East, get Lalvin EC1118. Lalvin EC1118 is a very forgiving yeast. And when I say very forgiving, I mean people have made toilet paper wine out of this yeast. It can go through anything. If it can make, if it can ferment toilet paper, it can ferment some apple juice. So get EC1118. If you're feeling a little more creative, maybe get KV1116. It's kind of like EC1118, but has a little bit more. It's like ever so slightly less intense, and it's better for flavor. I would have used KV1116, but I was out of it. <laughs> I didn't feel like driving all the way to the brew shop because I already had all my stuff, and I was like, "Hey, I gotta fill, I gotta fill like my Saturday night somehow," you know, or Friday or whenever it was I did this. But personally, if you're starting out like brewing, I'd recommend uh, EC1118 after you've exper uh, experimented with bread yeast and stuff because. There's nothing wrong with bread yeast, it's just, it doesn't settle as well, and it, um, generally speaking, it will not ferment anywhere past, like, like, 8 or 9% alcohol by volume, and that's another reason why I recommend EC1118 or KV1116, is because, um, or I've been saying KV1116, I always think KV because Kurt Vile, but it's K1V1116, K1V, not KV. So the reason I recommend those yeast is they can ferment, if you do it right, they can ferment up to like 18%. I've heard stories of people that got them to like 20, but that requires a lot of other stuff to do. But generally speaking, it'll ferment pretty easily up to like 16%. And if, again, my estimations are correct, this should come around 15. So it should finish maybe a tiny bit sweet, which is personally what I want. Maybe not what my parents want, they like their stuff really dry. I like a little bit of sweetness to it, but this should come out in the sweet zone. It should be sweet. If you did, if it, if it's dry, then <laughs> I guess you did something right. But um, my best guess is that this is going to come out sweet. So, and a common misconception is, oh, there's so much sugar in it, so it's going to be sweet. That doesn't that's not really true because the yeast eats most of it and converts it to alcohol. So even if you dump a crap ton of sugar in there, it's probably going to all ferment out unless you put like a ridiculous amount in there because you can't just put, you can't just put an infinite amount of sugar and be like, Oh, it's going to, it's going to ferment out to 75% alcohol by volume. Yeast can only go so far. I think the highest fermenting yeast goes only to like 25%. And that's, that's like turbo yeast. Um, or Quebec, however you pronounce it. Very, very specialized yeast. But um, but anyway, so so and that's why I say if you don't have access to brewing yeast, just use bread yeast, but take out the extra sugar because if you put in the extra sugar, it's not gonna be able to ferment it and it might even stall the fermentation. Like, it's kind of like how you sit down at the beginning of the week for looking at school assignments and you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much crap, I can't do any of this. That's like what the yeast is thinking if there's too much sugar. But if you give it a reasonable amount of sugar, it'll be like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this today, this tomorrow, you know, that's just kind of how it is. But, um, but then, yeah, you, you pretty much give it one more little stir, just get the yeast all in there and, um, you cap it, you, and you let it sit for a month or forever, or however long it takes until it stops bubbling, basically. 
or you want it to sit a little longer than that. I know that's kind of the rule for, yeah, it's done fermenting, but it doesn't mean it's going to taste good. <laughs> I've made the mistake of um, when I was just first starting out brewing, like this is this was like my second or third time making something. Probably like my second time if I think about it. But I made, again, apple wine where I, I had apple juice, I had some brown sugar, I dumped it in there and I just let it go in my closet. And I waited a, maybe 10 days and I drank a sizable amount of it. And I had a god awful hangover the next morning and I didn't even drink that much of it. I had probably the equivalent of maybe two or three drinks and it just was the worst. And luckily I was still working at the UPS store and my boss was like, all right, Chris, I'm going to help you through this, you know, gave me like chips and stuff just to kind of calm my, or not calm myself down, but just to kind of get myself back on being, feeling good, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, my point is leave this alone for at least a month. And even past then, what I always do is I will, um, actually I haven't done this in a while and I probably should do this again. But what you can do is get yourself a um, siphon, an auto siphon, or if you're a cheap bastard like I used to be, what you can do is just slowly, very slowly, very carefully pour it into another container, put it in your fridge for like a week. And all the yeast should go to the bottom and you should be able to drink it without <laughs> much risk of of the yeast getting to your stomach because for me, I've kind of built up a yeast tolerance, but not a lot of people have done the same. So if you drink too much yeast, um, and if it's still a little bit active, you're not in for a good time. Um, but generally speaking, it will temporarily kill the, the yeast if you put it in the fridge. I say temporarily because if you take it out of the fridge, they're going to wake back up and they're going to keep doing what they were doing. So, so, and when I say pour slowly, I mean pour slowly. Like you do not want oxygen getting to this. So pour, pour it so that you cannot hear it splashing. So like you, I'm trying to think of how to, okay, I'll show you. So this is your fermented stuff. This is the empty container. Pour like this so that it's all kind of just one stream that's not, uh, disconnected. You know what I mean? Just very, very slowly. So, but I have an auto siphon. I just get someone to help me with it and I pour it in a different, or I siphon it into a different container. And probably that's what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to get it into, excuse me, get it into a different container, let that sit in the fridge for a week or two and then put it into bottles. And hopefully it's good because the last time I made this, everyone seemed to like it. And I made it on accident last time. I was trying to make kill you and I just put a bunch of apples in there. So it kind of did what this does and it was good. I did cinnamon too. And a lot of people seem to like it. I had a lot of it. Um, cause I made like five gallons of it. So, um, so yeah, I mean this, this is going to be interesting because I have two types going here. I have the, like I said, the regular and the kind of premium, but you guys can do this with, with whatever apple juice except if it has preservatives in it. So look for apple juice that's just either from concentrate, but make sure it doesn't have any like things that end in like eight or eight. Really the only ingredients you want, or you don't want, but they're okay. If you see like citric acid or, you know, like vitamin C or something, or like ascorbic acid is another one. If you see stuff like that, it's okay because that kind of naturally occurs anyway in apple juice. But um, don't get anything with like any blah, 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 sulfite or sulfate or something just ending in eight or eight. Don't get that because it's not going to ferment. And if it does, it's going to take a hell of a long time to. I don't know what it is about eights and nights that yeast don't like, but they just don't. You know, it's literally like oil and water. Pretty much getting it, to, trying to get it to blend. But... But yeah, and then, so yeah, in about a month, it should be ready. Um, I tend to wait a little longer usually, but um, 
but you can do whatever. I mean, but but what's weird is um, I I tend really not to like my own stuff that much or that often. Um, and if I do, it's just kind of like, eh, it's okay. You know, but most of the time it's like, oh my gosh, this is like almost disgusting. But um, a lot of other people like it. So I don't know if it's just because they have better palettes or something, but I tend not to like my stuff all too much. Like there have been times where I've liked it, but it's rare. And, um, but then again, it was almost two years ago that I made this. And two years ago was a different time. So, I mean, it's probably gonna be better this time. Holy crap. I have been like not like shutting up for the last 20 minutes. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully it'll be soon because I've been kind of on a nice streak of making videos. So yeah, see you guys in the next one.